weekends. Let me kids. Lamikins, Lamikins, come on, eh? Lamikins, go by, Lamikins. We laugh at an awoke. It's four o'clock in the morning. Starting to get light. Are your midichlorians pumping? Uh, Star Wars, isn't it? Got a high midichlorian count. Jamie Jakes. Bruv, this is the time to shatter our minds. Do you know why? Why can't we shatter your mind, bruv? Do you know why? Why? Because it's the, we haven't had the perils of the day. Do it a bit more professionally then. Go. Okay. Welcome to the Dreamy Jaguars. Welcome to Dreamy Jaguars. Q and A today. That's what we're going to do in the woods, in the Church of the Living, in the Church of the Real. Welcome to the Church. First question to you is. What's your opinion on the psychedelic gold rush that's taking place at the moment? So big pharma, Ooh. big pharma getting their greasy mitts on psychedelic therapy. It's a catch-22, isn't it? Because if you don't have them, they're not going to lobby the government. That's the problem. The big pharma will be crossing palms with silver to get this stuff out there and without that it's not going to happen it's not going to become legalised so there's, there's a for example DMT would I would never and I'm not just saying this for the camera sell DMT to anyone A, because it's illegal, that would be the first thing. But secondly, because it's not something to be sold or marketed or used like it's a monetary form. So that, you know what I mean? That greed that comes behind it, you just can't do that with DMT because I look at it like it's spiritual. But do I look at psilocybin in the same way? I suppose I do. All those psychedelics. All the sacraments, mate, isn't it? All the sacraments. <clears throat> and why would you need to buy it when you can just make it or go and pick fucking mushrooms at the right time? Don't have to say fucking, though, do Sorry. It? Why would you need to go and buy it when it's just there? There's mushrooms out there. In the right countries, they're there growing the whole time. It's only this country you've got a certain amount of time for them, isn't it? So, so what is my thing? I think, unfortunately, we need the big pharma to push the psychedelics forward. Yeah, and hopefully, then there'll be like an off, there'll be... It won't wind up like a heroin. No, because there's like, there's offshoot, you know, there's, there's... The, the thing is, the, the problem, and, and I'll add to your question that I've just asked you, is that, there are moves to take away the experience. That's right. And, and just give you the The hormones the or the chemicals, the brain the stimulation to give you the medication that you need. Yeah, so that 
It's well, fixed. actually, I heard that you, they, you, you might be able to have the option. Do you want the spiritual path or do you just want the solution? Yeah. And I think that is where pharma will break down because I think you need the spiritual path for well, the healing. Hopefully, once it's like, like Pascal said <coughs> now in the documentary, once it's in the legal system, regardless of whether or not the masses are given the option to have their depression depleted through the, the, the medical pursuits yeah. the same time, if it's legal, it's legal. So the psychedelic psychotherapy aspect then becomes parallel to it and thus more people will be having the experience anyway because a greater number of people are gonna be curious the more popularity it gets someone said to you oh my uncle was seriously depressed and he went and done some psilocybin therapy with a local counselor yeah or or like <coughs> there's this thing that can cure your depression but at the same time if you wanted to see an alternative state of consciousness reality real, parallel reality with aliens a lot of people are going to go, oh, i'll have that i'll go for that so you know what i mean might the both will I know grow. you say a lot of people but <coughs> I'm not sure definitely in our in our world that we live in and we produce these films for those people would definitely go for it I think but curiosity people are humans are curious aren't they no, I don't know I mean, there's a lot of people who'd be frightened okay. of the hallucination okay <laughs> question one answered guess we've had because I've loved every single one of them but what who has been not not the favorite personality but the most intriguing information to you not personalities because I like every single guest we've had okay but what has been the best information for you can I give snippets on and then yeah you can you can say every single one of them oh, I like this about okay. this this and this yeah yeah okay right so <clears throat> okay so I was I've been familiar with Anthony Peaks for a long time so I, I know what Anthony's all about I know his theories I've read a lot of his books I love his stuff he is yeah, he's, he's, his books are awesome, and he, and he, but he, he's he's not in the psychedelic genre yet, or maybe that's you know what I mean. His his emphasis hasn't been on the on the psychedelic experience; it's been on on the on the on consciousness, which again is equally as as important. But yeah. I suppose I've my <coughs> my <coughs> sorry, hang on. <coughs> my path has been through psychedelic experience yeah so that in that psychedelic framework S same as Dave Luke Dave Luke I've been familiar with for a very long time um, you know Dave's just quality as a personality he's just like he is the grandfather yeah so we look, I look at Dave as like the dad psychedelics yeah he's a psychedelic dad even though you're only like a couple of years younger than him I'm way younger <laughs> uh, so Dave's a day's quality and obviously and the same with with Dr. Gallimore Dr. Gallimore you know I've been I've watched every talk that he's done and I'm very familiar with his work I suppose Pascal I'm not that familiar with because he you know he's, he's up and coming he's younger than us by a year or so <laughs> um but he he's he you know he's kind of the protege isn't he and i was blown away actually by that boy's knowledge and intellect 
is frightening, yeah? And I think out of, like, out of all of the interviews that we've done, Pascal is just like, blew my socks off with, with his, because he because he's got he's a not he's a great mix of the scientific and the mystic. He looks like a bloody he looks like he stepped straight out of, of, of a shamanic world, and he's just like I like his aura about how he puts across the information that that he is trying to get out. It's very poetic the way he speaks. Um, so I think loquacious. He's loquacious. <laughs> very loquacious. <laughs> He's loquacious, and I, and I think so. I think Pascal has probably been like the one that's really kind of took my breath away when we've talked to him. Um, and like I say, and that's you know, I love them all equally. They're all, they're all. There's no one who's more favourite than the other. By but, I'd say Pascal is the one that's really like Jesus. This guy's like the future. Same question to you then, mate. Uh, Favourite interview, taken away from what we talked about with regards to any favouritism, just purely on the content, favourite interview, go. Okay, for me, I think, because I, I love the, the, the science side, not of the psychedelics, but of everything. And not that I understand it all, but that's what I'm trying to get to. There's that, there's an element of the science side, and then there's an element, element of the, the prehistory stuff. You know, the fact that these people have been taking psychedelics for years, and then how that's tying in. So is, there's a toss up. I, I, loved the, I loved the one with Anthony Peaks, where I got to speak to Anthony, walking along there was lots of stuff that I liked in that um, I enjoyed the conversation I enjoyed and I enjoy the conversations that we have with Ricky Vu because sorry Rick I didn't mention you <laughs> RM Vu because it is um, it's the prehistory stuff and it's the stuff that it really it gets my brain juices going. It re I really enjoy the speculation of were they doing it and where how far advanced were we and if they were doing that shit and they understood it like Ricky says then they were much more advanced than anyone's ever thought of. So there's that, there's the scientific type side. So for me it would be peaks and, and vote because that's the stuff that I really I'm really into aside from the psychedelics it's more for me there's a lot of this prehistory stuff so I would love to get my hands on Graham Hancock I would ah, just to have a conversation with that guy about some stuff um, so hopefully that can be arranged because I definitely want to to, to pick pick the brains of Graham Hancock um, but yeah and aside from that, everyone's brilliant. I mean, I love the, I love the information that comes from Gallimore and I love the paranormal side of it that comes from, you know, from Dave. You know, the precog, the fucking telepathy. Sorry, I swore the precog and the telep telepathy. I love that stuff. And then, um, and then Pascal, who's just like the local genius intellect that we can go to. When we're thinking, when we feel a bit dumb, and he can just tell us we're right or wrong. Um, so yeah, I mean, all get all. Everyone's been brilliant, but yeah, my two peaks and, and Vu who are my favourite for, for those reasons only. So, you asked me about the psychedelic gold rush. So, what's your take on the big farmer? And don't cut out my stuff to make yourself sound even more intelligent because you just nick, that, nick what I use. You should be over there a little bit, though, shouldn't you? <laughs> but, okay, psychedelic, big pharma psychedelics. Um, like you say, I agree. It, it's the legality that, you know, 
it's not going to get out there unless Big Pharma are involved because that they they pay the bills, yeah. So, and how just how that's delivered really is 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 what's what's important because it could go horribly wrong with Big Pharma involved. They're not. You, you've got to you've got to have the, you've got to have the base platform I think in this um, in this game of kind of psychedelic consciousness exploration you've got to be coming at it from a from a point of curiosity and and a want to learn more about yourself it's all about yourself at the end of the day the whole this whole thing is about you even though you even though the ego, kind of trying to smash the ego apart ultimately it's your subjective reality that you're probing into yeah? well, this is your universe that you are living this is my in. own you are universe. The main character yeah? this is my own movie so so to have someone coming at to have a group of people coming at it from a monetary perspective is wrong from the off that for me can only go one way unless unless it just Cat, lest it's it's the it's it enables it to become mainstream, and then bosh. There's a take, there's a breakaway takeoff of consciousness exploration off the back of the big pharma intro. If big pharma have their fucking greasy hands around its neck for all time, it's not going to work. So, the deepest place you've been. I know, right. In this a break is, through this is, this is a, a phallus swinging episode. But something Graham, uh, not Graham, something um, Andrew Gallimore said um, resonated with me. It was, I was listening to him on a podcast with someone, and I, and I never realised this. Because I've had it explained to me that you 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 can do sh like the the amounts of DMT or psychedelics you can do don't won't ever kill you or put you in a coma or anything like that. However, Gallimore mentioned that if you do too much DMT, you can go into a blackout state. And back in the day when we before we perfected that method. There was a couple of occasions where I wound up in blackout, but it, was, it wasn't like I am shut off, I don't remember anything. It was like literally I am in a blackened place, like a vortex, and there was no love and care and information coming at me. It was literally like I am lost in this black hole. How the fuck do, sorry, i told off for swearing. How do I get out of here? And, um, it's almost like the light at the end of the tunnel was that's where our reality is. And I've got to get back up there somehow. It's like looking up a well. Yeah, but um, I think just to add to that, right? So the blackout, the, 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 the falling unconscious. So what Andrew talks about with that is that obviously if you do too much DMT, you, you'll, you'll go unconscious, right? But... Does that mean that you are unconscious or does it just mean that you have gone to a place that is beyond memory? Yeah, that you have no That's what he said. That's he did say that. Do you He actually... said he doesn't know if it's a blackout, it's just you don't know when you come back that you've gone so far you can't bring any of that stuff back with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is that? Well, I don't know if I was ever there because I've only been in a, like a blackened vortex of like, where am I, what, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it, you know, if you're talking about this is the this is the funny thing about I'll just use the deems because I'm not coherent on everything psychedelic. But with the with the deems, I've gone just as far on a one. Oh, let's just have an easy one. Let's just have an easy one. I don't want to go mad tonight. Done an easy one, and I've got the most epic visual entity giving information like trip when you just think you're gonna have an ordinary one a little mellow one and then like i said i've done 
gone in life, oh, let's tee, tee up the 220s or whatever, tee up the 250s, and, and you just don't. You don't move on, you don't get through. So I think, um, what would be my best, my most pleasant episode? Deepest. I, I would think those are the ones that actually make you um, reflect. Not the entity, not the entity stuff, not the visuals, it's the ones where you reflect and you go, ah, oh, hang on a minute, that's what's important in my life. When you get those ones. Yeah. And they ain't necessarily off the back end of a big, a big, um, a big dose. They're just like emotional ones that come at you. Ah, oh, I keep forgetting. Deepness, the deepness. I'm going to keep it experiential, right? And I'm just going to go from a from a kind of from a light dose perspective to a heavy dose. Light dose, 20, 30 milligrams. Bomb, you're in. Warp, warp. The visuals, why you are yeah, dancing and moving around, and you'll get the shawar. And you're like, oh, you're kind of looking at it as a third, like this. You're, you're there. You're looking at it. And then you go into a bigger dose, 50 milligram, 60 milligram. You become this thing, yeah? You become it. So for me, you, you lose all. You, 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 the lower doses, you're, 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 absor you're absorbed into it, but you, you kind of, <coughs> someone will cough, and you're like, oh, I'm in the, oh I can, that, oh, that must have been adjusted. But it's all very psychedelic at the same time. But the big doses, you are not in the room. You become part of this ethereal story that's going on. And for me, the look in the box incident was so female, familiar female entity. I'm kind of, I was sat on a chair, but in my mind, I'm sat with this entity, sat next to me, coaxing, like, can, like I don't know, just, through sleight of hand, drawing me in deeper and deeper and deeper. And it, not like with them, not, not maliciously, but there was definitely a, a, a manipulative aspect of it because it was, look at this, look at this, come with me, look at this, and you're then going deeper and deeper and deeper. And we talk about the visuals and this box thing, this Terence McKenna, esque contraption the ark of the covenant i was just in it and and had and had let go of everything else that was me gone and i am in this death zone afterlife zone with this girl child female god angel saying come look 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 in the box in the box mate i've never seen anything like it mate i've never seen anything like it i can't describe what it was i don't even think it was it wasn't a box but inside it was i just remember i've got i've got you know like when you have snippets of, of the trip and you kind of see this thing, don't you? you? You've got this thing where you can't, you want to play it back in 4K on a screen and just go, what the fuck was that? That was, it was deep. And it was deep to the point where I just didn't care. I didn't give a shit about my like, life. I didn't care. I was gone. This world, this reality was gone. And I was that. Yeah, I was it, I was yeah. that, I was looking at that, I wanted to be part of that. She was like, my work is done. <laughs> it's unreal, mate. And it's those experiences that then make you think, what the fuck is that, mate? Is it just a brain? Or was she there?